Steve, thank you for joining us today. Perhaps you could start by just sharing with us a little bit about your career and yourself. Good morning, Chris. Thanks for inviting me. After leaving university, I chose a marketing career and I joined Unilever as a brand manager. And I progressed through the various levels of marketing before I was appointed a country manager. And then after 15 years, I left Unilever and I joined Bristol Myers Squibb, the US pharmaceutical company, as the Asia Pacific head of their consumer products uh, portfolio. Within that portfolio, the business with the most latent potential was a business known as Mead Johnson Nutrition. Early success enabled me to move into uh, becoming president of the international business and then eventually global president and global CEO. Within Bristol Myers Squibb, our, our value and our potential was somewhat hidden, and we got the opportunity to split Mead Johnson from Bristol Myers Squibb and go through an IPO. So in February 2009, at the height of the financial downturn, um, we listed the company on the New York Stock Exchange, and despite the unfavorable economic conditions, our shares were 14 times oversubscribed and we immediately were valued at a level that put us into the S&P 500. I stayed on as CEO for another four years and then retired in 2013, but remained on the board until 2017 when the business was acquired by Reckitt Benkiza. The business was valued at that time by Reckitt Benkiza at $17 billion, which was more than four times the IPO value only eight years earlier. So we were we were very pleased that we'd created such shareholder value. And today I'm a non-executive director of Tesco PLC, non-executive director of a, an Asian company called the RMA Group, and I'm an advisor to the Thai Union Group, which is the world's leading seafood manufacturer. You've clearly had a very successful career. You've created a lot of value for your shareholders and stakeholders. Do you have any advice or methodology that sat behind how you created that value and made yourself so successful? Clearly this is a, a personal point of view. Um, we were crystal clear from day one as we transformed the company what our mission, vision and strategy was. We were taking a US centric company to become a global multinational. We were taking a company that was focused on infant formula to a company that was focused on a broad range of infants and children's nutritional products. We were taking a company that was um, very much directing its marketing through the healthcare professional to one that became a hybrid marketing through both the healthcare professional and direct to the consumer and a company that was effectively a cash cow to a high margin, high growth business. So we set about investing in science to deliver superior products, investing in our brand to deliver a superior proposition, focusing on the premium end of the market, which had the highest growth potential. So as part of the sort of simplification and relentless focus, it was important for us to decide what we were not gonna do. That was equally important to deciding what we were going to do. So among the first decisions that we took were to divest all of the businesses outside the core. That included pediatric pharmaceuticals, pediatric vitamins, women's health, and adult nutritional products. It wasn't that those categories weren't profitable and growing, but they distracted our focus. Talking of focus, we decided that only the emerging markets with the highest growth potential would be where we would put the majority of our resources. And so we disinvested in North America and in Europe in order to free up human and financial capital to invest in the emerging markets of Asia and also of Latin America, with China first and foremost uh, among those. And as I mentioned earlier, we also decided to forgo the opportunity to compete in what you would call the, the mass market, the high volume market, in order to focus on the higher value but smaller premium and super premium segments of the nutrition market. So that simplification and focus was extremely important. Additionally, we analyzed that there were only certain capabilities within the organization where we felt that we were able to be best in class. Um, science, marketing, uh, selling, manufacturing. And we divested or outsourced 
all of the other functions, so warehousing, physical distribution, financial shared services, transactional finance, IT, traditional sales were all activities that we decided somebody else could do better than us for a fee and that we would put our human and financial resources behind those activities where we could be truly world class and ensure that we weren't spreading ourselves too thinly. Thank you. You've really emphasised the point of focus and absolutely pursuing it relentlessly. You're now a director on a variety of boards, PLCs, large Asian companies now. Do those same methodologies count as importantly today as they did when you were driving your wealth creation? I believe they do. It is a personal view. Um, others may have a different view. I think that in today's world, with the rapid emergence of new technologies, globalization, um, changing consumer and customer behaviors, higher expectations among stakeholders, it's even more important, in my view, to overcome the complexity and the challenges that come from those changes. And therefore, I think simplification, prioritization, and focus is even more important. And it doesn't imply that you can't innovate and evolve. In fact, I think it makes you more flexible and more agile um, by being leaner and, and simplified as an organization. It's so easy to get distracted by non-core operations, non-core activities, and to be paralyzed by complexity, by the challenges of decision-making, by spreading yourself too thinly. Thank you, Steve. Some excellent words of wisdom to share with our, our colleagues out there, our business owners and those leading businesses today. You've shared with us your thoughts and ideas, and I think we can all learn something from your experiences. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.